and welcome to Website Must Haves. So this webinar is brought to you by your local digital service squad. Um, I'm Ben Frisch, we've got Karen Gibson joining us and uh, Maggie Mullen is gonna be running the majority of our presentation today. Um, the, uh, the Digital Main Street program, if you haven't heard about it, is brought to you by um, all of these logos you see here on screen. We've got um, FedDev Ontario, the province of Ontario, the Ontario BIA Association, along with uh, the Toronto Association of BIAs. And here in Simcoe County and South Georgian Bay specifically, the program is managed by uh, your South Georgian Bay Small Business Enterprise Center with additional support from the County of Simcoe, the Town of Collingwood, and the Town of Blue Mountains. Um, so we're grateful for all of their support in making this possible. If you have not reached out to your local digital service squad um, and, uh, and learn about all of the digital marketing supports available to you through Digital Main Street and beyond, uh, you can book a 30-minute consultation and get started uh, and the link is um, right here. And I don't know if I can, oh, no, oh, here we go. Here's our contact information. Um, I'm going to drop that in the chat um, so that everyone can um, book a consult. Uh, if you have not done so, um, there are a lot of things that we will uh, look at and work with you on. Um, I can't think and type at the same time. Uh, Karen, if you could talk to them about the audit, what can people expect when they get an audit from the Digital Service Squad? I think it's a really fantastic tool. It's a general overview of your uh, digital marketing um, properties, I guess you'd call it, like Facebook, uh, Instagram, your website. Uh, we go a little bit into SEO. Um, and Google My Business. Uh, so it's an overview of the content um, layout of your website. Um, so yeah, it's just an overview and it gives, it'll give you an idea of what needs maybe to be improved. Yeah, right. And plus that, um, I would say uh, right now there's a big push uh, that we are promoting the uh, digital transformation grant. Uh, the application deadline is coming up at the end of the month. Um, so downtown Main Street businesses that could have that could be eligible um, are are uh, definitely encouraged to apply for this because uh, it's a great opportunity to um, get some additional funding to support your digital marketing. Um, and, um, and yeah, so there's our contact information. The booking calendar is in the link below. Um, and I will say too, with the digital audits, um, this is something that we look at a lot uh, when we do a digital audit is your website. And so mm -hmm. the concept of this webinar came out from um, just really diving into a lot of websites um, giving people some uh, best practices when it comes to uh, what is important, what do you need to focus on with your website. And uh, that is everything from uh, the content to the, mm -hmm. uh, the layout and the organization of things, as well as um, the, the functionality of it. Um, these are all really important things and actually even the, you know, behind the scenes, um, the coding aspects or even just the, um, the SEO, all those kinds of things. So um, I'm going to hand it over to Maggie Mullen, our uh, digital service squad uh, rep, who is, uh, if you heard at the beginning of the call, we were chatting about uh, some of her coding, uh, I guess, uh, classes things and yeah uh different projects <laughs> that she's got going on so um very well versed in all things web development um and a great uh addition to our team so uh maggie i will hand it off to you take it away perfect good morning everybody all right so we're gonna talk about website must-haves today so 
How websites designed affect your user experience. And this is really important. A well-designed well website will keep their readers strolling. Oftentimes, this means breaking up contact into smaller chunks, including visual hierarchy with banner images, fonts, and supporting elements, and utilizing white space. I just wanted to add to, um, I forgot to mention, uh, there is the chat, uh, but there's also the Q&A section. So at any time, if you have questions, don't hesitate to drop them in there uh, and we'll answer them as we go. <laughs> so you wanna capture their attention. So this is what happens above the fold really does affect the entire user experience. So what do I mean by above the fold? So the concept above the fold derives from the newspapers and the way that they were folded in half when displayed on the newsstand. So due to the fold, only the top half of the daily newspaper's front page would be visible. <laughs> it only takes 0.5 seconds for a visitor to decide whether or not they will stick around on your website. Therefore, the, that first impression counts and you really have to grab their attention. So you wanna incre increase functionality too. How your website functions is also a huge factor in user experience. Responsive web design makes sure that your website looks and functions the same, no matter what the device the, web the user is using for their website. And yeah, re responsive website meaning uh, works on or resizes to whatever device it's on, right? So phone, tablet, anything like that? Yeah, so it, it, anything, um, if you have a large monitor, it'll um, reconfigure so that it fits and displays properly on any size of screen that it's going to be displayed on. So outdated and tacky websites, they won't cut it anymore. And since 94% of people won't trust an outdated website, consistently updating and refining your design and content is key in pleasing your consumers. So user-friendly design. Your design should, you should design your website for your users, not just to boost your ranking on your, or your personal bias. A website should be user-friendly before you should even consider yourself with ranking or with how you feel the website looks. You really want it, you have to think of well, your website from your consumer point of view and what is easy for them to be able to understand in your website. Yeah, we talk about that a lot on, on, um, SEO webinars too, right? In that, like writing the content, it's important to think about people actually consuming it and reading it and finding it enjoyable as opposed to just stuffing a bunch of keywords into a paragraph, right? Yeah, it's kind of considering like if you buy a pair of shoes or you're making a pair of shoes, you're not making them just for you, you're making them to sell to the mass market. So you need to think of what the mass market likes. Right. So comfort, style, all those things. Uh, and short and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> right. When it comes to content, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so the type of content to insert above the fold. Speaking of short and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where you want to display all your pre primo content. Your most important content that you need all of your visitors to see is going to go above the fold. You want a clean and simple navigation. Your headlines are clear comp company statements and missions. Your sub headlines are short descriptions of what you do or offer. And your main call to action, your main goal you want your consumer or customer to do. So the number one goal of your primary content is to convince your visitors to stay longer, to further their investigation into what you have to offer. Your primary content must be clear, concise, and specific. So let's we'll break this down. <laughs> So your headline, so in one simple sentence, two at the most, you must answer the question that all your visitors will be asking. What does your company do? A good headline will answer this burning question. So it needs to be short, 
clear, and descriptive what you do perfectly. You want your visitors to read your headline and think, hey, that's me, I need this. <laughs> Here's a great example of a simple, effective headline that says a lot. So a tip, if you don't know what to write, try asking your customers or audience why they visit your website. You can literally take the words right out of their mouth and use them as your headline. Yeah, and I think that's a really great um, approach because a lot of times um, there can be a lot of lingo or jargon that, that a business owner is just used to and they're, um, they feel is appropriate, but then when they ask their actual customers, they might not use that same language, right? So, um, and they don't understand it. Yeah, yeah, they don't understand it exactly. Like if it's a, if it's something really technical or if it's um, just yeah, like jargon, just industry speak, then you could just be confusing people. So I think yeah, asking them how they actually describe what you do is is really a great uh, great approach. Yeah, we as business owners have a tendency to use a lot of jargon, and we don't really mean to, but I think it happens a lot more than we think. Who is what you're used to. So you, and it, that's, again, another reason you don't look from your point of view, you look at your customer's point of view. Right. Mm -hmm. So subheadlines, you have an opportunity to define your service or product in a bit more detail with your subheadline. The brief description should answer, what problems do you solve for me? <laughs> and here is a good example of an effective subheadline. So in one short phrase, it tells you how their product can help you. And in this example, their users can use their product to create pages to generate more customers. And conquer the world, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a good one. So your primary call to action. A call to action provides directions and answers or tells your visitors to do something to take the, ne to take the next step. This can be call us now or click for a free quote. So here you can see a very easy, very in your face call to action. Start your free trial. So you wanna think of a call to action as a direction indicator. We all know to take direction because we do this every day in the real world. Oh, there you go. <laughs> This sign lets you know you're heading eastbound and you can get their red light by turning right on the exit 40A. So again, it's a direction of where you want the flow of your visitors to go. Don't expect your visitors to know what to do next. They don't. You want your visitors to visually see that there is a next step that they can take. So never be shy about telling them what to do in a helpful way. The key is to actively engage with your visitors. Tell them what to do and guide them to take action so you can start building a relationship with them. This can significantly increase your chances of winning new customers. Yeah, just a point about that too. I mean, um, I feel like we see a lot of times when it comes to, uh, within our digital audits, of course, um, e-commerce websites that don't, follow that same principle of, of providing that call to action right up front. And I think it's, it's more, um, I think, critical, but also um, obvious to us who are auditing the business that that should be your main call to action, right? Because, I mean, that's what you are there to do is to sell or your, what presumably your website is there to do is to sell uh, something. And so to, to have that button or the shop like hidden somewhere down below is a, is a big opportunity missed, right? Well, and you can have more than one call to action too, um, placed throughout your website, but above the fold is the number one place that you want it in your face large so that it completely catches the visitor's attention. Mm -hmm. So you, are, you want to use images or a video to illustrate your message. 
people are naturally drawn to visuals like images and videos. So it's a great way to create a mood or show your audience what you're all about. It is important to remember to use images and videos that are relevant to your website. If they don't serve a purpose or don't do a good job enhancing your overall brand or message, don't use them. It is better to keep your website clean rather than including things that are not useful. So your logo, your logo needs to do a good job of subtly communicating what your company is about. It hints at the DNA of your business, whether you are professional, creative, aggressive, aggressive or laid back. Your navigation bar. This is the roadmap you use to show your visitors what's important and where they can go to get specific information they need. Um, sorry, quick point about the logo too. One thing we, we see a lot as well with the digital audits is um, logos uh, that don't match logos elsewhere in your property. So we always look for um, brand consistency uh, is a really important thing that, you know, ties all of those digital properties together. So um, just to stress that, <laughs> always important, make sure that the logo that you're putting up on your website is the same on your Facebook, on your Instagram, mm -hmm. on your Google My Business yeah. and everywhere else. Yeah, and just to the point about the logo too, is um, you, as soon as someone sees that logo, you want them to automatically know who you are without even seeing a name or anything. It's literally your identification is that logo. So if you have the exact same one in every single place that you have anything to do with your website, it becomes that much more into your visitors that they will automatically know exactly who they are, what they are, and what they're doing. Consistency is key again. Um, so consistency throughout, throughout the properties and consistency in the look and the feel is really, really important. Consistency is A number one. So the rule of thumb with your navigation, only include necessary pages and don't confuse users with too many unnecessary options. Your visitors will not be interested initially in pages about copyright, privacy, or terms of service. So you insert them elsewhere, like your footer or a site map. Create logistic or logical groups of related links with the most important links organized from left to right. Keep page titles short and descriptive. Place your navigation bar in a prominent location so it's easy to find. This is generally found at the very top of your website or to the left-hand side as well. I find we, um, it's really, it really helps um, if the navigation bar is at the top, of course, because when that's where people can enter your site, but also in the footer. And it doesn't have to look exactly the same, but the same links could be in the footer as well. Yeah, so um, that was what we'd call a site map. And actually, those are really good um, if you want to go into the SEO side of this. Um, generally, your bots or spiders that are crawling, those are what they look at to um, give you more credibility and actually higher your ranking as well. Sweet. So put yourself in the shoes of your visitors and ask yourself this. What is the least number of steps I need to take before I can make an informed decision to buy your service or your product? So types of content to insert below the fold. As mentioned above, we, not everyone will stroll down your homepage to view more of the page. Your visitors who will actually scroll down your homepage to see more are those who are interested in what you have to offer after reading your headline and your subheadline, your above the fold content. Otherwise, they will have left your site already. So a type of content you wanna insert below the fold is to support your above the fold content, what you offer and how you can solve your customers' problems So here are two types of content you should display below the fold. So first you have your secondary content, which is your content that is not important enough to make it above the fold, but it is still crucial to convincing your visitors to become your loyal followers. Additional content as well. These are the nice to have information, but are not critical in making your website effective for making a strong first impression. 
So first, so your secondary content breakdown. So secondary content reinforces your primary content above the fold. The goal is to convince and educate your visitors on what exactly they'll be getting out of using your service or buying your product. So the benefits list. Here's a common mistake most websites are focused on listing out a lot of features and don't focus enough on describing the benefit to the potential customer or reader. There is a saying in marketing, features tell, benefits sell. So the main question your visitors will ask is, what is in it for me? Why should I eat at your restaurant? Why should I hire you as my photographer? The key here is to show your audience how their life will change for the better with what you are providing them. So a tip, listing out features are only helpful after you convince your visitor that you can benefit that they can benefit from you tremendously. Don't underload or a boring list of features on your website or for your visitors. Focus on communicating how your visitors can truly benefit from you. So trust indicators. Trust indicators can be a customer success stories, customer testimonials or quotes, professional accreditation, industry, okay, yeah. If I can speak, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Better business. So anything that um, is relevant to or any reviews that you have for your um, business, this is really where you want to put them because and any media quote or the number of social networks that are shareable and you display your personal blurbs about your team members to create trust. And the reason you do this is because this is a secondary source that's, come, that's coming to your customers to back up that you are a trustworthy business and that they should do business with you because so many people have already done it and they love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah and just, reinforce, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it no, just ahead. reinforces, um, that's the word. I can't, all of a sudden I went totally blank and I could hear reinforces in my head. <laughs> Um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, I just wanted to say too, because we talked about uh, at the beginning, Maggie mentioned um, the uh, just the look and feel of your website, you know, having it um, clean and modern looking um, when like is another factor, you know, not just those accreditations or um, the Better Business Bureau, but even just um, a professional uh, looking website that's up to date can instill trust in people you know as opposed mm -hmm. to something that just looks old and outdated it can maybe uh make them a little bit questionable well that's one thing um i'd say i see a lot of people trying to put too much on their website because every mm -hmm. everyone, everyone always thinks more is better but it's really not the case at all um if i go to a website and i don't know where your call to action is or i don't even know what your business is about then I am not, what's the point of me being on your website? So people buy from people or businesses that they like and trust. So by showing other people like you and your brand, you can boost your credibility and trustworthiness. The key is, the key here is to positively associate your business with external parties and show that your business is operated by people, not robots. <laughs> So features list. Features list helps you, helps your, predominant, your potential customers know what exactly they're getting when they take, when they make their purchase. List out your most compelling features that your visitors will want to have. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make is that the list, that they list out a long laundry list of features that don't relate to me as a customer. So again, the saying, oh, wherever you think more is better, that's not the case. Really, your key ones have to be shown. You don't need all the extra clutter. So even when the features may sound interesting, I couldn't care less if, it, if the feature don't, doesn't solve my problem or answer my needs. So think about features that will resonate with your audience and remove the extra features that won't make a major impact on your homepage. So if you have a lot of features to list, instead of listing them all, 
pick the top 10 to insert into your homepage. For your other features, create a separate dedicated features page where your visitors can view the entire list of features there. So additional content below the fold or breakdown. So these are the nice to have information, but they're not, they're not critical in making your website effective for making a strong first impression. Such content does, does have a place on your website, and if it's placed in the appropriate location, can help complete the overall picture of what your business is about. But if they are used incorrectly, they create clutter, clutter and confusion. So another great aspect um, that's a little bit newer for websites is incorporating chatbots um, to your website. So this is becoming the go-to feature on websites for users that, find, that can help find what they're looking for. So whether you're considering a live chat bot or a live chat or a chat bot or both, it's important to have a chat option on your website nowadays. So consumers are no longer interested in searching around your website for the answer or pages that they're looking for. So give it to them quickly with live chat or through chat boxes. Your user experience will skyrocket and this for your company will rise in too. Um, yeah, and I would say too, you know, I've noticed this function, uh, functionality a lot more on um, a lot of retail websites. And I think it's helpful um, when, uh, you know, it's like just running into someone at a store and, you know, asking a question like, hey, you know, I didn't see this on the shelf. Are they expected to have more coming in soon? Like, um, there's all kinds of any number of questions that people have that you don't necessarily have the answer to on your website and providing all those answers just like would be overkill in terms of content time consuming. Um, so the chatbot can just like direct them to someone to hopefully get an answer really quick. And I think it's, it's a really helpful tool. Well, that we live nowadays, we live where people want their information right away um, because we have everything at our fingertips. So no one's going to be searching through your website to find the answers. They want to be able to automatically have that answer directed to them right away. Another really important thing um, for websites nowadays, um, if you don't have an SSL certification, uh, you really need to have it. So this is um, this is making your site secure. Doesn't matter if you have. Um, any kind of payment or anything like that, regardless of what kind of website you have, you should definitely have SSL certification. If you use any sites as WordPress, Wix, uh, any of those, those will already be included in your website. Um, an easy way to see if you have one is if you go to your top search bar, um, right before your website name, you'll see a little lock symbol and you can actually click on that and it'll actually show your certification um, for all of your visitors. So security is on an all-time high when it comes to your online platforms. Um, and also, too, Google has come out and said that they give priority to secure websites in their search ranking as well. Another way of know it, knowing whether you have that or not is if um, your URL says HTTPS as opposed to HTTP. Mm -hmm. And there are other, um, there's lots of websites too that will have uh, cheap and expensive SSL certifications. But again, if you're using um, a build site, those will already be included in your site from the beginning. Um, and then, so these, there's a whole bunch of links here. Um, there is a link also for the chatbots through HubSpot, which um, it goes through their, how they designed their um, chat box. So it gives you an idea of how really easy it is to incorporate these into your websites. Um, it's definitely not a hard practice whatsoever. Um, and another thing um, too that we can touch on is color. Um, so a big rule with color for your website is don't go crazy. Generally, websites should only have two at the most three colors. Um, anymore, it becomes too distracting. Uh, and if you want more color or how to kind of make your site look a little bit different is using shades or tints of the existing colors you already have. That can really be able to help you create a lot more depth and a lot more uh, visual stimulants in your website as well. 
And um, another one for your headers and your subheaders is typography. Um, generally, you don't want to use more than two different types of ty typography. Um, you also want to make sure that your font sizes for your, you want to do your body font first, um, have an appropriate size where it's legible, um, and then you create your headers on top of that so that they are a little bit bigger, so that they're more um, direct, so the viewer knows exactly what the article is about. I just uh, dropped a link to the PDF uh, version of this presentation in the chat as well so that uh, everyone can have access to all of these links um, for uh, further um, education and <laughs> resources. Yeah, I added in a couple extra ones um, that I didn't have in the slideshow. So you'll see one about uh, speed is a killer. So another really important thing that we did touch on um, in earlier webinars with SEO was your load page time. You really want to make sure that your, po your pages are loading very quickly um, so you can use the different tools to check what your speed rate is now. Uh, Google has a great one and then it'll give you suggestions on how to fix that time so that your page is loading fast enough so you're not losing more visitors as well. Um, and uh, what about the single page websites? Um, versus multi-page? Versus multi-page, yeah. What if we so, people break down? Um, so single pages are a great starter point. So um, if you are, or you just want a single page for um, a personal portfolio or um, a, a certain kind of business, like if you do, um, let's say, meetings or scheduling um, appointments in that, single page is fine. Um, the nice thing, though, is for multi-pages is, is that you can continuously add pages. So if you start and you're not sure if you want to have one or if you want to eventually add and grow your website, go with the multi-page off the bat because you can continuously add to that uh, website with not a problem. Whereas with your single page, it can be harder to be able to transition that into a multi-page. You can keep adding content to your single page. But that means that the sh uh, visitor is going to have to keep strolling and that's not going to be good for um, visitor usability either. Nice. Um, and uh, that's it for our slides, right? We are um, <laughs> wrapped on that. Um, so I, I wanted to ask um, uh, Karen about her uh, thoughts on, on modern design as well, in terms of like, what are some um, trends that you've noticed or, or see a lot of? Uh, from a design perspective, either good or bad, I guess. <laughs> um, I think now um, we're trying to stick to the full width of the screen um, as opposed to um, like whatever it was before, 900 pixels or something where you had space on either side. I think everybody's trying to and push everything to the outer limits, which creates a lot more space and creates a lot more white space. And you can easily develop sections when you're using the whole breadth width of, of your screen. Um, I've noticed um, there are trends in breaking up the content into like blocks basically using a grid in a way. So breaking different content up into blocks worked well too. Um, less is more is a really big one. Um, Cause people, mostly people are on their phones and they stick around for about six seconds. So if somebody comes to your website Again, back to above the fold, which is really important. Um, you need to grab their attention in about six seconds. So you don't want big, long content. People do not want to read 
big, long statements. You're probably better off almost doing a, like a head, a subhead, and then other things would be short and sweet content in boxes. Um, this is what I do. Um, this is what you're going to get. Again, back to benefits. Um, that's a big one. It's all user experience. User experience these days. It's not. It's not selling per se. It's more thinking about who is looking at your website, who your customer is, and how you're going to attract them um, to purchase your products or come to you for a service. And you need to almost dumb that down to get their attention right off the bat. So I think in, in marketing speak, it's called kiss. Keep mm -hmm. it simple, stupid. I know I don't like the stupid part, but um, <laughs> hey, that's what they say. No, and it, it works. It really does. It, it, it's a lot better. It's tension grabbing and all the clutter of words can be a little overwhelming. Another thing too is you want to make sure your links, navigation, videos, images are all working um, on any size of screen. Um, so whenever you're taking it from a full desktop down to a mobile, you want to make sure that your website is compressing in a way that is functional, readable, um, and really easy to use and see whenever the consumer sees it. I think most web developers nowadays, um, they probably, I would say more than probably design mobile first yeah we do um, responsive um, so we generally use the grid method um, bootstrap is a system that we use a lot of so uh, you have to can you start smallest and then you can bind it up um, to the large scale after because everybody's on their phone and yeah they very rarely <laughs> I think anybody uses a desktop anymore it's mostly phone and that's um, and that's Sorry. again why the content needs to be short and sweet because yeah. if anyone knows reading anything on your phone, a lot of content is really just, it's harder to read because your screen is that much smaller. Um, so you want it to be short and sweet to the point. Mm -hmm. um, I also noticed um, when we're talking about um, menus and menu at the top is really it's obviously a good idea because it's the first thing people see when they come to your page. So they know exactly the content basically that you have. Another thing that needs to go up there is all of your, um, uh, your social media platform. All your little icons should be at the top as well so that people instantaneously can, well, they can maybe go scroll a little bit through your website and go, Oh geez, you know, I'd like to have a look at what they're doing on their Facebook page or what they're doing on their Instagram page or check out your YouTube videos. So we need that right at the top. And I would advise also for that to be um, in the footer area as well. Um, yeah, definitely when designing, that's the number one um, staple for a navigation bar area and for your um, footer as well. So you want, you essentially have copies of information on either side. Navigation is a little bit, e it's larger, easier to use. Um, and then your footer has a site map, which is condensed. But again, your links go everywhere. Um, you have to make sure those are working and all of your social is down there as well. Contact information, again, is good to have at your very bottom as well in your navigation bar, a link to your contact information because they might love you, but if they can't get a hold of you, then that's, <laughs> there's nothing you can do. I've seen also um, in the menu area, um, so menu area and your social media links, a lot of people do a little bar on the top. I can't remember exactly what they call that, but there's a good place to put your phone number and possibly your email address and have those links. Um, I noticed one customer that I was doing an audit for, if you, if you clicked on their phone number, it actually put that right on your phone and you, all you did was hit uh, dial. Yes, yeah, so I, and it'll be um, the mobile version, and then once you expand that, um, it'll give you the number, but it won't automatically connect. But those are all linked in your uh, mobile as well as your email. It'll automatically link to be able to send you um, 
a message or what or whatever they're uh, wanting to communicate with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the call, to, the, the call now button um, on mobile is such a, uh, a lot of times it's a really simple thing to add to a website, but uh, incredibly critical because um, a lot of people, that's why they're on your website in the first place, just to get your phone number so they can give you a call <laughs> when, when they're on the mobile, that is. And again, that would be another thing with the call to action that we keep talking about. Um, it really is one of the number one things that you want to have on and visible in your face on your website. Again, you have to lead your users to where you want them to go. They have no idea whenever they come to a fork in the road, essentially, and you need to be that sign to direct them what path to take. Yeah, I and I think that was, are, Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, no, I, I was going to say, um, I think it was interesting that you're saying um, that um, you're designing websites for mobile first and then for desktop. We kind of grazed over that. And I think it's a really important point um, because most, I feel like most people go the opposite way, right? I mean, it's just traditionally what we've been doing. Um, and I mean, what are, yeah, what are some of the other benefits to doing that? Well, essentially, because um, most people have a cell phone as their only way of communication. Um, some people might not even have a desktop. So you really have to think about what is the number one way that your visitors are going to see your website? And it's gonna be on a mobile device. So you need to think, it's a lot easier starting with a condensed form of your information and expanding that up, opposed to trying to condense that down and make it legible. This is really, again, where it comes in, as Karen said, less is more. You wanna be to the point of what you want your people, like what you are doing, what you're, who you're about, what your business is about, because if it's not clear and concise, then people are not going to be sticking on your website. So it's really important to have a really, navigation is a huge, huge new uh, user experience. You really want to have a great navigation, easy, simple, descriptive, shows where you, all your important information uh, for your user. And that's number one clear, concise logo that you can see regardless of the size of it, which is very important as well. Um, And then call to action. So generally, whenever you're on a smaller mobile, um, you'll see a lot your navigation will be in a little box. It's kind of like a hamburger is what we actually call them. So it's a drop down menu. So whenever you first go to your website, all you see is that your logo and your call to action. Because essentially five seconds in, that's all I need to know. And I can go from there. So, and then you can start, when you start making it bigger, that's when you start incorporating how the page is going to look and what kind of content you're going to have in there. Visual cues are huge, but you really want to make sure that the images you're using are of high quality and your videos are of high quality. Because if they're not, don't put, their, don't put them on there. Nowadays, no. the technology that we have with our phones alone, like there is no need to be putting a low quality visual on your website at all. And that goes for social media too. Like we have state of the art cameras in our phones, every phone now, um, you really should have decent photos on your website nowadays. That is a really good point too. And we, I think we see a lot of times um, a a major lack of photography, and and images within a website um and what are some of the key photos that people should think about incorporating um when they're even just like planning out their website it's got to be related to you and your business if it has nothing to do with that then it should have no place on your website so if you are selling products have really good photos of those products or your key products, really interesting, unique, set you aside from other companies or businesses. Um, If you're a restaurant, 
really uh, good pictures of your dining experience or fun pictures of your employees that are working to really get that enhanced feeling that you know you're a part of that kind of feeling that's what you want to give to your customer and viewer you you want them you want to give them a mood or a feeling with your entire experience of your website and that comes a lot with your photos um, if you use stock photos you're not going to get that same kind of personal feeling or personal touch with that. Yeah, they need to be more personal, um, especially when, let, for an example, on the about page, you know, you're talking about um, you if you're an independent, uh, but you may have some people working with you, um, what your business is about, wh how you started it, why you started it. The photographs of you in your business, um, maybe doing uh, something of, that's about your business, um, your key personnel that help run your business. Um, this all ties into sort of making it that much more personal, I think. Um, and these days, I've noticed, um, I, I guess websites are exactly the same, but in Facebook and Instagram, if you're putting posting uh, personal photos um, that are about your business, I find they get a lot more engagement than just random um, stock photography per se. Yes. Uh, also, um, a good point you were touching on is um, about your business, about you. This is a this is generally one of your navigation sites. You generally have a page dedicated to your history, you, your company, your employees, because people want to know who they're buying from, who you are, before they consider actually investing. Um, again, that's the trustworthy essential part of it is that nowadays people want to know who you are, what you're about, so that they can feel comfortable in investing in what your product, your service. Um, I just saw a question um, about how to engage from the condensed view to the full website. So what I mean by the condensed size of your website is just your mobile application. So that's your state, the website is the same. Um, essentially you build one sub website across that will expand across all um, devices from your desktop to your mobile. It just changes how it's viewed so that it's better equipped um, to be user friendly on the size of device. So whenever you have a small, like a mobile phone, your website will be designed to display uh, in a way that's easier used for the smaller device. And then that's programmed into that website will have the feature to display it on any size of screen. Um, with the exact same content. It's just where it's displayed uh, that the program will automatically be able to show what the content is. Um, it's the exact same site though. Yeah, that's interesting too, right? Because I think um, when mobile sites first started becoming a thing, it was something completely separate, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, so I guess, yeah, it's important to note that you want it, it should be exactly the same thing. and and the website is gonna just resize. And the way you can see that, like just live, is you can even just take your, your browser window on your computer and you can just grab the corner and, and drag it to resize to something really narrow, see how it looks, mm -hmm. and then pull it out um, you know, to see the full width. Um, it's just one quick, easy way to test that. Yeah, um, another, if you're really techy and into that, um, if you actually right click, there is a button that'll say inspect. You can actually inspect every element of that website, your website, um, it, it's all there. So you can see their um, HTML code, everything, the responsiveness. Um, but again, responsive um, the web design is, what, is how we build websites. Uh, we build you one site, but it is just, we give it the ability to show on different sizes of screens in the most appropriate way with the exact same content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. So if there are any other questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A um, and we'll be happy to answer. We've got about 10 minutes left. Um, I don't know if there's anything else we wanted to add. <laughs> well, while everyone thinks of any other questions, uh, for us, uh, um, if you sorry, if you do another thing that I just 
have to say for my sake, uh, for typography, for font, um, mm -hmm. when I say that, is please never use Comic Sans. <laughs> please oh yeah please yeah it's just oh, it's that. it's just a no-no just don't well and i think another you know um kind of best practice is to just even avoid um a lot of like very scripty um fonts for especially for oh, headings and things um because it, it can just be illegible especially if then you look at it on a phone the, the font is just really thin um, and decorative and it's not very appropriate for something like a heading on, on your website. You're probably better off to stick to the, to the, to the, the age old ones. I know it some, sometimes it sounds boring, but Helvetica and Arial yeah. and, you know, um, Times New Roman. <laughs> yeah, there's because the seven, there's more like legible. There's a seven grandfather fonts that um, you can use on any site and they will be legible. You can readable uh, in the industry. Uh, web design is what I do. Uh, there's a lot more that goes into, you know, we can get into spacing, kerneling and all of that. Um, but again, your font needs to be, it doesn't, it's not to be fun. It's to be able to be legible. You want the information to be easily read because you also want to think about users that for user experience that may not have the greatest eyesight or you know you really have to there's a lot of factors to think about um, with that and you really need to make it the easiest ability to read to see again that's with your colorations as well you really have to think about all different types of users and how you can be accessible to all of them and specifically you have to recognize your target audience mm -hmm. who it is your particular site is selling to. So if you're selling or, or your service is more towards the seniors, then obviously you're going to have to make your, your type and your, your font very legible, your type sizes legible, um, everything um, more legible and easy for them to access. Um, so yeah. again, target audience is a big one. And another thing too, um, just with audience, um, again, with coloration, um, a lot of people on um, screens actually have problems seeing certain colors, um, reds and blues and greens are a lot of those. Um, so again, those are things that you really, they're things you would never think of because you may not have that problem. But again, everything that you're doing is not for you. It's for your consumers. Um, so you really have to take yourself out of it and think of everybody else essentially and how they're going to interact with the site. Sweet. Well, um, we might just wrap it up there. Um, if there's no more questions, um, just a reminder, uh, we've got the, um, uh, we've got the enterprise center.ca slash uh, calendar uh, for our upcoming webinars and events. Um, and just as a reminder, um, the next one coming up, I'm stalling because I'm pulling it up. As we <laughs> Google my business. <laughs> Google my business, that's right. Um, oh, and next a note. Wednesday. That's okay. right. And, um, Google my business. Um, is happening on the uh the 18th and yeah. we did have to move it to um to wow. the 12 to a 12 a.m time slot um just to avoid uh conflict um so that one will be uh really exciting i mean um google my business is a simple little thing but a lot of um a lot of businesses don't uh, don't use all the tools that are available. So we're going to dive in deep uh, into what what those tools are, how you can use them to uh, just really enhance your listing, enhance your profile, uh, and just help sell more online. So be sure to check that out, um, and we'll see you there. Uh, so and thanks again to wanted to talk about um, oh your new venture this week 
filling out the, the forms, the application for the grant, I believe. Um, yeah, so yeah, right. Um, uh, on top of our webinars um, that we've got uh, scheduled, we're gonna be doing something new. If anyone has not um, uh, onboarded for the digital uh, Main Street program, um, and especially those who uh, might be eligible uh, for the grant. So um, you need to be a downtown Main Street business, um, 10 or fewer employees or <laughs> 25 or less if you're a restaurant. Uh, there's a couple more criteria, but you can check it out at digitalmainstreet.ca. Um, but so again, I mentioned off the top, the grant is uh, deadline is coming up at the end of the month and uh, what we want to do is a couple of webinars you can, uh, or Zoom meetings specifically. So it's going to be a group meeting um, where you can pop in. We're going to run through the, uh, the whole process from start to finish. So it's going to be really cool. We're going to um, start with the, the registering your business on Thursday, Friday, um, two different uh, time slots, Thursday at 2, Friday at 10 a.m., and uh, so those will be really short. I mean, it's a 10 minute process to get through that initial onboarding. Um, and then we're gonna sit down and watch together all of the videos, the training videos. There's two and a half hours on Monday at 10 a.m. That's gonna be fun. And then uh, we didn't talk, we didn't set a date yet for the application portion, but we're gonna, have another meeting following that one to actually walk everyone through how to apply for the $2,500 digital transformation grant. Um, so uh, you can find out all the details on our Facebook page, uh, Enterprise Center, uh, the South Georgian Bay Small Business Enterprise Center on Facebook. And uh, we will have all the updates there later today. And um, yeah, we're excited, hope to see you there. And um, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. And yeah, and thanks to Karen night. and Maggie for <laughs> your support and running the webinar. Uh, <laughs> great information. Really appreciate it. Have a great day, everyone. Awesome, thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye now. Bye for now.